Did you know you can get mana stones for free by defeating monsters out in the open world in Grand Cross Age of Titans? If not, then this is the perfect video for you because today we're going to be going over 12 tips that every Grand Cross Age of Titans player needs to know. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking me when Grand Cross Age of Titans is officially launching, and today is the day. Grand Cross Age of Titans is finally available across all mobile devices and PC, and there's going to be a link in the description to download the game absolutely for free. And as as a reminder i have a one hour beginner's guide to get you guys the best possible start in the game as well as a 40 minute guide talking about the best heroes that you can be investing in those videos will be linked in the description below and if today is your first day playing the game you absolutely want to check those out now in case you don't know mana stones are the items that you need to level up the skills of your heroes here in grand cross age of titans and having a hero with all skills at five is going to make a big difference compared to a hero when you first unlock them especially because getting all skills skills to five is the only way to unlock the awakening skill which is typically a nice little boost in power so how do you get your hands on more mana stones well one way you can do that is by defeating these monsters out in the world now if I tap here on this dark elf you're gonna see a list of acquirable rewards from defeating him out in the open and you'll notice that there aren't any mana stones available here however if you go into your alliance menu and you tap on territory and then off to the left if you tap a list of all your watchtowers your alliance may have actually planted down a mana stone summoning tower which you can use to defeat these special monsters now here you can see that at level one this specific summoning tower will create up to 10 monster troops that carry hero mana stones and the spawn cycle is every 20 minutes and this is at level one okay and what you're going to notice here is that unlike the regular monsters these monsters have golden level icons and if you tap on them you'll see the additional reward table underneath the regular reward table and you'll see here that it's possible to get one two maybe even three unique mana stones for free by just defeating the same monsters that you would normally be defeating anyway and in the late game this might not be that exciting because you may max these out already but my suspicion is that if you're watching this video you're probably a new player to grand cross age of titans and you're really going to need as many of the unique mana stones as you can get especially in the beginning of the game now it's currently unknown if this method is ever going to give us free legendary mana stones the rewards that drop from these monsters depend on their level so the watchtower that you upgrade actually matters you want to upgrade the watchtower that is closer to the center of the map which would have the highest level monster spawning and you'll want to level up this tower of course this is all stuff that is dependent on your alliance if they actually go ahead and do this but you could see level two it spawns up to 12 monsters okay so again it's unknown at this point in time if you can get legendaries from this but maybe later down the line it's possible and it's definitely worth a shot now I will warn you that the drop rate for this is relatively low to get your hands on a mana stone but the cost is the same you're gonna spend the same amount of stamina points to attack this one as you would for one that doesn't drop mana stones so you literally have no reason not to okay tip number two has to do with experience items that you can acquire through various methods while playing the game here you can see that I'm in the VIP shop and I can trade 25,000 wood for 10,000 secret learning method experience and this is what you need to level up your heroes to bring them to higher levels and therefore add more stars to them to unlock more skills now one of the things that might be enticing for you is to do this trade and perhaps for this trade it's it, it might be worth it but one thing that I want to let you guys know is that experience in this game is actually pretty easy to come by and the reason for that is because there's a lot of different heroes in the game that give you a massive amount of bonus experience when you're fighting monsters out in the world so the number one best way to do that is with a hero called Acteus his third skill gives you up to 90 percent bonus hero experience when you defeat a hunt out in the world so if we go ahead and zoom out here you'll see that even a level 12 gives you 18,000 experience and then that's increased by 90 percent and that's not to mention that any heroes with the hunt talent tree also has a talent called hero growth which gives you another 30 percent of bonus experience if we look at a level 15 dark elf it's 22.5k all right so you can see 
with all the different multipliers in the game that a measly 10,000 really isn't that much and you might as well just save that wood for an upgrade or for troop training or something else that's way more expensive than just grinding the monsters out in the world and that's also especially true in the trading port where you may see experience on sale for a very small amount of gems but guys I'm telling you gems are your premium currency do not ever waste them on hero experience and if that weren't enough experience for you the shrines out in the world will occasionally summon what's called a binzi and this is essentially a really big monster that spawns out in the world and you can see that this gives you 60 thousand experience multiplied by all the things we've already talked about and you can hit this with multiple armies at the same time there's tons of ways to get free experience let's move on to tip number three and this is which buildings are the best ones to speed up when you start an upgrade well first of all if you guys watched my beginner's guide then you know that you should only be using your speed ups on a building after you've gotten the maximum amount of alliance helps because this will reduce it by a significant amount of time so for me this was two and a half hours that I got shaved off the top just for free by asking my alliance for some help but the best buildings that you should be using those speed ups on are your troop training buildings as well as your academy okay the reason for this is because if you're leveling up a troop training building for example the archer training ground while this building is upgrading you can't train archers so let's say that you have 10 hours until your upgrade is finished well that's 10 hours that you're not training archer troops and if you compare that to something like a farm or like a sawmill you actually have other farms and other sawmills and you have other ways of obtaining food and wood by gathering it out in the world and that's actually at the beginning of the game where you're going to get a lot of your resources anyway so the opportunity cost for speeding up a farm or even like a quarry it's honestly not that high but any amount of time that you're spent not training troops or not doing research at your academy is just time that you are wasting it is an opportunity cost that is really really high for these specific buildings personally I would say the Academy is the number one building to speed up followed by the troop training buildings and then finally if your castle is the bottleneck to progressing your account then and only then would I say sure go ahead and level up the castle because at that point it makes sense and you need it to progress your account tip number four has to do with upgrading your talents and here we're going to take a look at the talents for Jeanette she is a combine and an attack hero and I just got to say this is only part of the tip but the attack tree on the bottom here I'll move my camera off to the side this whole attack tree is super super strong especially for open world PvP it's absolutely insane there's ways to get tons of free mana such as mana absorption here where you get 30 mana per turn and then although at the end here you have mana efficiency which decreases the mana cost of skills by 210 it's insane so this is a little bonus tip the attack tree on pretty much every hero is really good you should always go all the way to the end here especially because the final talent gives you 10 percent all damage to enemy troops unbelievable value for a single talent point but the real tip here is that as it turns out you can see that these talents go in a sort of linear fashion first I'm going to upgrade this three points of attack then I'm going to upgrade this three points of HP then it's three points in March speed and I think that's pretty straightforward you have to put some points into a specific line here before you can move on to the next one but what if I told you that you don't have to necessarily do that one thing that I noticed is that on the very top here on this combined tree once you make it to the fourth line here you have to choose between increasing your defense while stationed or increasing your defense while attacking enemies that are stationed so neither of these talents actually will do anything in a vast majority of open field pvp or pve content so what if you don't want to spend any points on these well the good news is that you can sort of get around it uh if you want to progress farther in the combined tree you can't you have to pick one or the other but you can actually side upgrade the talents in the attack tree so for example this says increases skill damage by nine percent and that's really powerful especially on a hero like Jeanette who does a lot of skill damage but the other talent here damage amplification increases your basic attack damage by nine percent and that's actually really good as well your basic attacks are the white numbers that you see every single turn that you're dealing damage well 
great news you can actually upgrade that as well now of course I don't have any talent points up on the top here but just because I picked one of these talents doesn't mean the other one is locked I can come back in here and I can upgrade any of the talents in the attack tree and I can completely ignore the combined tree all the way at the top so if I wanted to I could grab some of the free stats that you see at the very front of the combined tree I usually recommend grabbing the March speed and the health and the attack is non-negotiable but if you really want to skip out on points that are literally wasted you could just go all in on the attack tree and put all of your talent points in there this is even more useful for the heroes that have the gathering talent tree or the hunt talent tree because typically you're only going to use those heroes in that scenario so for example my Acteus I'm never going to use him in PvP so I could literally come in here and just get every single bonus possible for defeating PvE content I am min maxing doing the PvE content because that's all I'm ever going to use him for and you might be thinking okay well what if you put him as like secondary to uh, an, another hero when you're doing PvP it doesn't matter the secondary hero's talent effects will not apply when you're deployed to battle they don't do anything as a secondary hero so it only matters for primaries so let's say eventually you do for whatever reason want to use Acteus in PvP well you could put a hero with a good PvP talent build as the primary commander and then you can still use Acteus as the secondary and reap all of the benefits of the PvP talents on the primary and then when you want to use Acteus for defeating the monsters out in the world he still has all of his really powerful PvE talents at the bottom and again this is the same thing for gatherers okay there are lots of talents here that increase your gathering speed and it's really nice to just have all of your gatherers be able to gather everything on the map really really fast there is no point in putting talents in the combined tree for a gathering hero because I'm never going to fight with this especially not as a primary so do yourself a favor and double up triple up on all the talents in a single talent tree if you think that the value is there tip number five is that barriers in this game are extremely strong if we take a look at Corvo his awakening skill says that he creates a barrier equal to eight percent of remaining forces for three seconds when remaining forces of troops commanded by Corvo is at 50% or lower. He's not the only one that creates barriers. You may be familiar with a hero like Calipi, for example, gives you a 5% barrier on her active skill. And you're also going to get your hands on Erin for free. And she has a chance to give you a 3% barrier. Now, this is important because let's say you have 180,000 troops remaining in your army and you activate this active skill. 5% of your remaining forces is 9,000, which means you have to take 9,000 damage over the course of three seconds in order for that barrier to break, which means for three seconds, if your enemy isn't dealing that much damage, you're not taking any damage at all. But this gets even crazier if you look at Calipi's Liege skill at level 60. It says grants a giant barrier equal to 10% of remaining forces within the selected area which remains for 20 seconds or until that barrier is actually broken which means that it's taken more than its capacity in damage okay so in the same example 180,000 troops that's 18,000 damage that you have to take within 20 seconds in order for that barrier to break now I'm sure in the late game when damage goes through the roof this might not be as strong as it is right now but I can tell you from experience for sure that there are times when I am testing out even just at level 30 and a four percent barrier I can be in the demon extermination and I won't take any damage at all for like 11 seconds before it actually breaks which is crazy 11 seconds of not taking any damage it's really good guys especially in the early game barriers are OP tip number six has to do with leveling up your hero's skills okay if we go back to Jeanette she is a great example of this if we look at her active skill it's really really powerful if we look at her second skill it's okay and then if we look at her third skill it's also really powerful so what do you want to do in this scenario well I would recommend for literally every single hero in the entire game except for hunters and gatherers every other hero in the game you should max out their first skill first before you do anything else but the tip here is that you can actually choose 
which skill you level up at any point no matter what okay now in order to unlock the skills you do have to level up the star level so in order to unlock the second skill you get it at two stars to get the third skill you get it at four stars and the fourth skill at five stars okay so if you have enough mana stones to level up the second skill but you don't really care for that second skill like i've done here with Jeanette, then hold on to those mana stones increase the level and star level of your hero and then once you unlock that third skill you can dump all of your mana stones into the third skill with no problem in other city builder games this is not the case typically it's upgraded at random from the skills that you actually have unlocked but luckily here in grand cross age of titans that is not the case and i absolutely love it so make sure you go through and read all of the different skills to see which ones you think are the most powerful like i said active skill is nine times out of ten going to be the best one to pick anyway but make sure you pick the right ones amongst the remaining three as you're leveling up that hero tip number seven has to do with your combat engineers okay these are your carts these are typically used for gathering resources out in the world okay carts excel at gathering and thanks to their high carrying capacity carts are typically used to gather resources out in the world that is mainly what they're used for but in the later game i would say around mid game to late game you unlock tier four units and there is also a feature in this game where you can upgrade these carts to catapults yes literal catapults and this is an absolute game changer okay because if we take a look at your standard units you're gonna see that the carts right here have a 0.5 range which means they are melee units and you can see that their stats aren't that great they have a nice chunk of hp a little bit of attack and defense and that's it they're relatively slow as well if you upgrade them to a catapult you're going to see that the HP remains the same, but the attack goes way up and your range goes to five. That means that this is actually the longest range unit in the game. So you can attack players from farther away than you can with any other unit. And yes, this does include archers, by the way, archers have a range of three. So the catapults, while you may notice they have about 10% less attack they have a significantly larger range and they have more HP and defense. So overall, your catapults are going to be the number one best long ranged unit, especially if you have a legendary hero like Freya. So if you're progressing in the game and you find that you have enough carts to gather all the resources that you could possibly want, and you think, why would I actually spend the resources on training more carts? I already have enough and they're not used for PVP or PVP or anything else. Well, think again consider continuing to train them because later on the line you're going to be able to convert them into catapults now even though you have like let's say tier one or tier two you can upgrade them to tier four or tier five and then convert them into catapults now converting these units does require special items and we're going to talk about that later in the video so if you want to know more about that make sure you stay tuned but if you've made it this far into the video consider dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other grand cross age of titans players might see it moving on to tip number eight this is very similar to the catapult story but this has to do with bombers okay if you come into your academy and you tap on the top where it says special troop you'll see that the first tab on the left is your catapults and this is the technology that you're going to need in order to actually unlock them but you'll see underneath there there is a little balloon with a cannon and these are called bombers and these are flying units that you can use out in the world and these are an upgrade from your archers now unfortunately i can't show you them like i can the catapults because we have to go through a specific chronicle in order to even see them in our kingdom but bombers are very similar to archers except they literally fly and you'll even see heroes like melaby who are typically mainly used for archers she also has a skill here on her second skill that gives her bomber attack as well now the thing about bombers is that yes they do have an aerial advantage and they can fly across certain walls and things like that but the bombers can only be taken out by archers so just because you unlock bombers later down the line doesn't mean that you should stop training archers because the odds are you're going to encounter enemies with bombers as well and so the only way to counter bombers is with the archers so you want to have some of both 
on hand at all times when going into war tip number nine has to do with Finn and if you guys have seen my video where I talk about the best heroes in the game then you'll know a little secret that I talked about with Finn in that video if you haven't checked it out go ahead and check it out on the channel it'll probably be linked in the description below as well but in case you missed that video we're going to talk about it here the leech skill has a really unique effect and that is that it returns your selected troops to the castle immediately now this excludes troops that are gathering rallying or stationed but anytime that you're just open field fighting you have a emergency get out of jail free card okay and the only benefit that you get from leveling up the lead skill is that it actually just reduces the cooldown so it doesn't get more or less powerful depending on the rarity it just you can use it more frequently which is really really nice but also remember that you don't have to use this skill on Finn you can use this skill as a lead skill on literally any hero that you have out in the world so if you're fighting in PvP and you find that you have accidentally extended too far into Alliance territory well as you're walking back you can cast the teleport skill on that hero even if it's not Finn and it will teleport them immediately back to your city for free this is a really good emergency teleport skill and it could save you a really expensive hospital bill as well it's also especially good for free-to-play players because there's literally nothing that a stronger player can do you're just gone so make sure to activate your trap card if you have to tip number 10 has to do with your VIP level now VIP is if you saw my beginner's guide one of the best places to spend your gems or if you're purchasing bottles in the game you're going to get VIP points just by doing that but the most important milestones for your VIP level are VIP six because you get a permanent second builder this effectively doubles the amount of building building speed that you have in your city now at the beginning of the game you're going to have a temporary second artisan okay so you will have a certain amount of time before you really need to get VIP six but eventually that goes away and getting VIP six doesn't cost that many gems and you may even get it for free by just being in an alliance where other players are buying bundles and you're collecting those chests the other thing about VIP six is this is when you start to get a unique mana stone every single day. And honestly, in the early game, you're going to need unique mana stones because unique heroes are going to be the best ones that you're going to have access to. You can convert these into literally any unique hero that you already have. I recommend putting them all into Jeanette. The second most important milestone here and arguably just as important is VIP level eight. And this has nothing to do with your buffs here. In fact, you're only getting a, a little bit of March speed here. What you are getting though, is a free advanced prayer book every single day. This is, I mean, this is how you do your summons. Okay. So this is going to be over time after, you know, some RNG, this will be a source of legendary mana stones, but also you get a guaranteed mana stone every single day of whichever legendary hero you choose. Now here you can see, I can pick between these five, because those are the five that I have unlocked. And I would recommend always picking either Melaby or Arthur, at least for the early game, because those are some of the best heroes in the game right now. Freya is another close third, depending on how far you are. And if you have catapults or not, of course, if you're a rally or station player, then go ahead and pick the best rally or station hero you can get your hands on. But this is huge because you know, you're going to get this mana stone every single day forever, and you can change it whenever you want. So it's not like you're eventually going to max out a hero and no longer get value. No, if I max my Melody, I'll just switch it to Ivan or I'll switch it to Freya or I'll switch it to somebody else. They unlock later down the line. And it is so important for the progression of your account to have a guaranteed legendary mana stone every single day coming in because they're really hard to get. You'll see with your advanced summons that the RNG sometimes it can be really frustrating. So definitely get VIP eight as soon as you can. Tip number 11 has to do with another upgrade of your Alliance watchtower. Now, if you come over here back to economy, remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about the mana stone summoning tower. Well, there's also an invention tool summoning tower. And if we go ahead and take a look at that, the purpose of this tower is very, very important. Unlike the mana stone tower, this spawns in the heroes way slower. The mana stone tower was every 20 minutes. This is every 720 minutes and it only spawns three. So what could be so valuable that is being spawned here that warrants such a long spawn cycle? Well, the monsters that are summoned drop what's called invention tools. And these invention tools are what you need in order to convert the carts as we talked about before when we're talking about getting your hands on some catapults now you can just straight up train catapults but if you want to do the conversion between that tier four or tier five unit 
you're going to need some amount of these invention tools and this is one of the only ways that i know that you can get your hands on some and tip number 12 has to do with what your stats actually mean here in grand cross age of titans and i know that that sounds like a really basic tip but you might know that okay you have attack defense and hp but what do they actually do like did you ever stop to think about that well i'm gonna tell you guys that if you're interested in dealing damage as primarily a cavalry player or as an archer player or as a catapult player then the number one stat that you're probably going to want to focus on is your attack stat and the reason for this is because if you take a look at a lot of different heroes in this game their damage of their active skill is scaling off of their attack stat so the higher the attack stat for these heroes is the higher the skill damage is going to be it is directly proportional that's the case for freya that is the case for melaby that is the case for sekhmet that is the case for helga basically every single hero in the game has an active skill that deals damage based off of your attack okay so now that we know that if that's what you're optimizing for great that's the best stat but what if you're an infantry player okay what if you're focusing mainly on infantry and you find yourself at the front of the battle you are the tank at the very front lines well your defense having a higher defense is going to reduce the amount of damage that you're taking from your enemy's attacks whereas your hp is your hit points so the higher your hp the more damage your heroes and their troops can take before the troops actually become wounded so for this reason if you are building an infantry hero and you're going through the talents you're going to want to focus on your hp and your defense stats but if you're building a cavalry or an archer or a catapult hero then you're going to want to focus on your attack stats now the only thing here that i want to mention is that your cavalry are also melee units so you may want to consider getting a little bit of defense and health on them as well but for archers if you're in the back or especially for catapults if you're really far away the probability that you're going to be getting hits isn't that high and the counter damage that you take when you're attacking at ranged is relatively low anyway so you don't really need to put that much emphasis on your defense or hp for these ranged units so go all in on attack scale your skill damage as high as it can go and you are going to be a damage output machine anyway guys that's going to do it for this video hopefully you found these 12 tips useful and informative and if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a grand cross age of titans video comment down below any other tips i'm still learning alongside you guys and i would love to know some secret tips that you guys have for grand cross and maybe in the future it'll end up in another video I want to thank Grand Cross Age of Titans once again for sponsoring this video. Generous sponsors like Grand Cross Age of Titans help me continue to do what I do on this channel. And honestly, I genuinely love this game regardless. So I'm super lucky to be sponsored by them. And if you want to help support them and my channel, go ahead and click the link in the description below to give the game a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.